Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our MCAT biology playlist. In previous videos, we have talked about the cell cycle, mitosis, and meiosis. Today, we will turn our attention to the reproductive system. With that said, now let's get started. Have you ever wondered why do we use this symbol for female and this symbol for male? It's not what you're thinking, Jeffrey. I believe these symbols are kind of something like ancient Greek slash Roman kind of mythology. So this represents a mirror, which the lady looks at to see if her lupus is getting worse. For males, this was to depict an armor and this was to depict a spear. After this lecture, you will never look at ancient Roman Empire the same. I mean, literally this dude is carrying his appendages. Female reproductive system, let's go, please. Get a blank piece of paper and a pen and write these down. And now pause. And here are the answers. One, not just the ovary, but the right ovary. Let's be sophisticated. Two, is the fimbriae of the fallopian tube. Three, is the fallopian tube itself. Four, is the ampulla of the fallopian tube. This is the widest area. This is where the male gamete mates the female gamete in the widest area of the fallopian tube. Imagine a dude and a dudette making out in Times Square, the widest area in New York City. That's how crazy this couple is. Five is the uterus, six is the fundus of the uterus, seven is the endometrium of the uterine wall, eight, myometrium, nine, perimetrium. All of them are the uterine wall. How about ten? Ten is the ovarian ligament, very important. Eleven is the broad ligament. Twelve is the cervix or the cervical os. We have two cervixes in our body. This is number one, number two is in your neck because literally the word cervix means neck. It could be your neck or the neck of the uterus. 13 is the vaginal canal, which opens into the vulva on the outside world. Why is the vaginal canal like zigzag, zigzag, zigzag to increase the surface area and to allow the vaginal canal to expand during childbirth? Male reproductive system, please pause. And Picmonic will help you answer this. There is a great mnemonic called 7-Up. What is the S? Seminiferous tubules. What is the E? The epididymis. How about the V? The vast difference. E is the ejaculatory duct. N is literally nothing. U is the urethra. And P is the penis. So, one is the scrotum or the scrotal sac. Two is the testis or the testicle or the balls. Stop being a snowflake and grow some balls. Go to amazon.com forward slash vertebral column and get you a backbone because you need one. Sorry about my dad jokes. Three seminiferous tubules inside the testicle and they produce the sperm. What is this orange part? That's the epididymis. One of the most difficult words to spell in the English language. At least for me. Five is the vast difference, which literally means the vessel that transport the sperms. Have you noticed the sperm inside the vast difference? Next, six is the ureter connecting the kidney to the urinary bladder. So seven is the urinary bladder, this muscle called the detrusor muscle. Eight is the seminal vesicle. The seminal vesicle duct will join the vest difference to form a common ejaculatory duct, which is nine, which will open into the urethra, specifically the prostatic urethra, which is inside the prostate gland. Eleven, urethra, and in this area we call it the penile urethra. So here it's called the penile urethra. In the prostate it is the prostatic urethra. 12 is the penis or the male copulatory organ and 13 is the gland's penis. What's the difference between gonads and gametes? Gonads are ovaries in females and testicles in males, but gametes are the products of the gonads. So ovum in females and sperms in males. In previous videos in this playlist called biology, we have talked about mitosis and meiosis. In a nutshell, mitosis will give you two identical daughter cells and they are identical to the parents. This was deployed. This is still deployed. Meiosis has two rounds of division, but the end result is four non-identical daughter cells and they are only haploid, but the parent was deployed. That's why meiosis is known as reduction division.
The difference between mitosis and meiosis was discussed in previous videos. If you're trying to make some gametes, you better use meiosis, man, the reduction division. Here is meiosis. We start with 2N and then we go down. Pro phase, pro, meta, ana, talo, pro, meta, ana, talo. And of course, this is round one. So it's called pro phase one, meta phase one, ana phase one, talo phase one. And then you have cytokinesis. Then round two, we start with just 1N. And then prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, telophase 2, and then cytokinesis 2. This cell will go into round 2, and this cell will go to another round 2. So the end result is 4 non-identical daughter cells. Why are they non-identical? Due to the phenomenon of crossover, which takes place in prophase 1. Hashtag genetic diversity. Okay, let's make some sperms. What is the name of this process? Spermatogenesis. Let's go. Start with spermatogonium. We'll give you primary spermatocyte and then secondary spermatocyte and another secondary spermatocyte. Each one will give you two sperms. So the end result is four non-identical sperms. Hashtag genetic diversity. N here means ploidy, C means the number of chromatids. So 1N is haploid, 2N is diploid, and the C is the number of chromatids. So when I say that the spermatogonium is 2N and 2C, 2N means it's diploid, so it's 46. 2C means it is just single chromosomes. But look at this for C. Oh, we have 46 sister chromatids. Oh, you know when they align together? Yeah, the tetrads. They are getting ready to become secondary spermatocytes. These are haploid, however, they are 2C. The end result will be some sperms. Some of them are X, some of them are Y. X plus ovum will give you a female. Y plus ovum will give you a male. The sperm is haploid and just 1C. Let's make an ovum. I said an ovum, not ova, because you only make one ovum per oogonium. The rest are a bunch of polar bodies. Here is a question. Why did spermatogenesis produce four sperms, but oogenesis produce one ovum? Think about it, folks. Here is the sperm, okay? The sperm is gonna meet the ovum, okay? Who's gonna retain the cytoplasm? Who will be the cytoplasm and the actual cell of the zygote? The ovum. The sperm will just put in the nuclear material, which is 1N, but the rest of the sperm is outside. It doesn't enter. The mitochondria is within the ovum. All the organelles are within the ovum. So it makes sense to have a healthy, fat, rich ovum because it will be the cytoplasm of the zygote. But who cares about the sperm? And that's why the oogonium will sacrifice its entire interior to just give us one healthy, beautiful, lovely, mwah, over. Next, we'll talk about fertilization. Oh, I know fertilization. It's when the sperm meets the ovum. Shut up. The sperm never meets the ovum. Never did, never will do. The sperm will meet the secondary oocytes. Mmm, preach. I mean, do you want to talk about science or not? So the sperm meets the secondary oocyte that was arrested, arrested with a felony or misdemeanor. Neither. She was arrested in Metaphase 2. More on that later. If you want to learn more about the electrolytes and electrolytes disturbance, go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. To be continued in the next video, please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download some biology notes for free and to get my premium courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.